guys, welcome back to another video. This is Motivation for Christian with Arizona. Welcome back, welcome back. Today we will be doing our Bible study Saturdays. We'll be diving into John chapter 10, verses 22, all the way to 41. Today we have Brother G and Brother Javi with us. We'll be having an open prayer by Brother Javi and a closing prayer at the end by Brother Gio. Heavenly Father, we bless you, we adore you, we thank you, we lift you up, and we give your name praise. Thank you, Lord, so much for another week that you have brought us through. We thank you, Lord, so much for another day that you have blessed us to see. God, as we're here on Zoom about to dig into your word, we pray that you will open up our hearts and our minds to receive that which you have for us this morning. We pray for revelation, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Uh, speak to us through this text. In the name of Jesus, we pray. We pray that you will continue to have your way and bless this time as we study your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. So guys, could you, could you give me a recap of what we discussed last week? Okay, we spoke you. about um, the good shepherd and sheep and um, just in the midst of everything, how good God is, that he's indeed a good shepherd. Uh, we spoke about um, the importance of knowing his voice and knowing that voice comes by the way of having a relationship with him. The more you cultivate that relationship, the better you're able to understand and hear that voice amidst all the other voices that you hear on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so that was my takeaway, that he's a good shepherd and in the midst of it all, he's going to lead us. He is our shepherd and we are his sheep. I had a similar takeaway too. Yeah. You basically said what I was going to say. So, Mr. Hurley, what was your takeaway from last week? Yeah, I would say the Good Shepherd. I took away the Good Shepherd. So for me, it's just like us knowing the Shepherd's voice. I think in this season right now, it's just uh, with everything happening, I think it's crucial that we are able to discern and decipher the shepherd's voice versus the enemy's voice um, or even our own flesh, you know, and our desires. Um, I think that was my takeaway. We each had a similar takeaway and now we'll be diving straight into is it 22. Yeah, I have your Bible over. Yes, sir. We'll be reading from the NLT version today. And it says, this is 22. It was now winter, and Jesus went in Jerusalem, the time of Hananiah, the feast of dedication. He was in the temple walking through the section known Solomon's colonnade. The people surrounded him and asked, How long? Are you going to keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus replied, I have already told you, and you don't believe in me. The proof is in the work, and I do my Father's name. But you don't believe in me because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice, and I know, and I know them, and they follow me. We're going to stop at 27. What did you guys get from, from those five verses, 22 to 27? I think here yeah, you see the people still don't believe in that he's uh, the Messiah. And he's pretty much saying, I've, I've done the work. What are you not seeing? What are you not getting? Why is this? Um, so difficult for you to, to understand. And again, we see he reference uh, the sheep and shepherd um, example that we've seen in the previous verses. And he's saying, if, if you are my true sheep, then you know me. You know who I am. You know what I'm doing. Just makes me think that, like, people really have a serious choice to make. Um, because it's not like you cannot become his sheep. It's just you choose not to become his sheep. You choose not to hear his voice. You harden your heart to his voice. 
um it, it just makes me think like people like people know that they're supposed to do the right thing and, and for them i guess they choose not to they just they think that living a christian life means you can't do anything you're restricted and you're bounded and you can't have fun and i'm i'm a living testimony that i thought that way but you know i stuck it out and i literally prayed and i tell this all the time i'm just like the dude is the answer to my prayers because i remember when i first started i first you know gave my life to christ it was like i feel like i'm on an island by myself because all my friends everybody i hung out with did the exact opposite of what i was trying to do and I was like, God, please, if you can just send me a brotherhood, like, my age, like, I want to hang out with people that's just having fun, that's Christ-like, you know, like-minded, like, and and God just showed up and showed out, like, it was insane. So, um, just just making that choice to hear the voice of God and be led by him, I think um, the other aspect is, if you realize like a sheep is it's like I, I think like like i guess what i'm trying to say i don't i don't know how to really phrase it but like just to be to be actually be a sheep like you have to realize that you're not in charge and you don't wander off and go where you want to go like you you wait and you listen as you're laying in green pastures as you're in peace and you wait and you listen for the direction of the shepherd when it's time to move, when it's time to stay. Um, and you trust that he's taking care of you the entire time. He's watching over you, keeping you out of harm's way. Um, that is what stuck out for me. And then the other thing, um, just a, more of like a, a Jewish tradition, put it back, a Jewish tradition tradition is uh, verse 22. It says, it is now winter, and Jesus was in Jerusalem at the time of Hanukkah, the festival of dedication. Um, for me, that's just something that, that stuck out to me. I would want to look a little bit deeper into that and figure out what was the origin of that. Um, and, uh, you know, just some information. Like, cause I, I feel like it's good to know the history of our brothers, um, Jewish folks. It's, um, that's just me. You know, I, I like to learn about their history and pray that one day they would accept Christ as their Lord and Savior. Amen. Yeah, and just a little tidbit on the Hanukkah celebration. Um, my Bible said it, it commemorated the cleansing of the temple under Judas Maccabeus um, after it was defiled. Um, with the sacrifice enough to pick at the altar and burnt offering. So the festival was celebrated towards the end of December um, to commemorate, commemorate the cleansing of the temple. Mm, okay. Um, we can look more into it, but that's just a tidbit of, of the importance of why they celebrated. Gotcha. Or had that set the festival. Uh, 28 says. <laughs> I give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one can snatch them away from me. Oh, snatch them away from me. For my father has given them to me and he is more powerful than anyone else. He can snatch them from the father's hand and the father and I are one. Once again, the people picked up stones to kill him. Jesus said, at my father's direction, I have done many good works for which one are you going to stone me? For which one are you going to stone me? They replied, we we'll stone you not for your good work, but for your blasphemy. You, you a mean, mean, mere men? Mere, yeah. mere. Yeah. Okay, okay. mere men claim to be God. Uh, Jesus replied, it is written in my own scriptures, but God said to certain leaders, of the people I say your I say your guys. I yeah I'm a solid thirty four. Um for me I, I love the part that says no one can snatch them out of my hands. Yep. Um and in this not only does 
Does Jesus give us eternal life when he gives us eternal safety? So he covers us and he protects us um, through and through, uh, no matter what we're going through. Um, and then verse 30, um, where he says, the Father and I are one. Um, this is the clearest statement of, of Jesus' divinity. So they're the same person um, in essence. They're the same in nature, but they're different in person in what they do. And so I love how that statement just clearly puts forth their divinity. Um, but it, it shows that they're one person in essence, but separate in person in what they do. Um, Gio? Oh, cliche, but pretty much what he said. Like he, <laughs> um, I was gonna talk about snatching out of God's hands. Um, I I just think for me, that resonates in a little bit of a different way. It's like people feel like bad things should happen to good people, right? And 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 or or, or the devil is attacking me, or. or it's the devil and it's just like for me if jesus is saying that nobody can snatch you from my hands not only am i going to keep you safe but while you're going through what you're going through understand that i am with you understand that i'm here your i i have you in my hand understand that right? um and for me, that, that's just reassurance, right? So, like, when you're going through bad things, don't think that you're going through those things alone and Jesus doesn't see, see you or hear you, but trust that Jesus is with you. Um, and then people would then go on to be like, oh, so then if he's God, then why is it happening to me? And, th and I think that's where your relationship with God comes from. That, that's why I think your relationship with God should be um, taken into account. Ask him. Hey, what's going on? What's, what's happening? You know, I trust you. I understand that you're in control. You know, you are the beginning and the end. You know it all. So I'm going to do whatever I have to do to, to trust you in this season with whatever's going on in my life. But if you can just talk to me and give me some reassurance and, 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 and let me know exactly what's happening. And I trust that he will reveal certain things to you. Okay. God allows stuff to happen for a reason. It's not it's not the devil and that like that. God allows stuff to happen. Because either it's gonna make your relationship strong with him or you're gonna learn a lesson from it. But that's whatever you go through, it's because God allowed it to happen and there's a reason behind it. I mean sometimes I mean we have in the book we have in the Bible like um mm -hmm. was it Job? You know, sometimes it is the devil, right? But like you said. Ultimately, God is allowing it to happen. Um, God is allowing that attack on your life simply because he knows that there's a purpose, like you said. God ends up getting all the glory and his faithful servant truly, truly came through and, and exemplified a perfect example of by any means, as long as I am living, I will serve you, I will worship you no matter what. My hallelujah belongs to you. Everybody at that singing session today. <laughs> what stood out to that's, me? That's tough. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. What stood out to me that uh, with the stoning part that they wasn't <laughs> stoning him because of the work that they, he did, but they was gonna stone him because he was, because in quote unquote in their words, God was calling him, but well, Jesus was calling himself God. I thought it was gonna stone him because of like what he did. Because, you know, they were so uptight by all the things that Jesus did and stuff like that. Yeah, that's good. That's what I was going to say next. Um, exactly what you said. And that, that goes back to the law in Leviticus 24 of, of the consequences for blasphemy. But, hey, good job, man. You said it. Mm -hmm. I just, you know what I think about, too? Um, how Pharaoh had those magicians that were able to perform the same thing or similar things that Moses was able to perform. Mm -hmm. and, and, or, or in Daniel, when um, he had like certain uh, fortune tellers or people who could do 
supernatural things have, have those abilities. And it's just like, I wonder if they're not necessarily blown away by what Jesus is doing because there's people out there that still can do supernatural things. Um, which is why they're not, which is why they're not so, you know, oh, this is, you know, we see stuff like this all the time. You know, that's just like a, a side thought that I have. I just wonder if that's what the case was because I guess, like you said, like they're, they're okay with him doing all these miracles and different signs and wonders. Okay. He must be somebody special, but now you cross the line because you're saying that the reason why you're doing these special things is you are God or you are the son of God. And they're telling you dude, you're just a man, like you're no different from any one of us. Yeah. And I think too, uh, what they hoped or what they wanted to be their savior was another king um, yeah. in a political sense, right? So they weren't looking for uh, a king in the spiritual sense or one to save their lives um, spiritually, but want to save their lives physically. So because that's what they were looking for, their mind was just, I guess, wasn't really grasping the fact that Jesus was the Messiah. He came to save the spiritual mind, save them from eternal damnation. I mean, they were, they were spiritually bound throughout the whole thing. But Gio, do you think this has to do with motive at the same time, though? Because they, because, I mean, obviously Jesus had a good motive behind every single thing you, he did. But the fact that they had no problem um, Allowing just um, Jesus to do his good work and then thinking him at the end. Do you do you think that involves like motive or something, or no? Um. So, I, I, I feel like the motive is in this case. I don't. I don't think that there's a motive per se, right? Because I'm looking at the definition. I meant to look it up too last night when we were in the service. Um, it says something that causes a person to act in a certain way or do a certain thing or um, the goal or objective of a person's actions. So when, like, you know how when people walk up to Jesus and be like, uh, I forgot what chapter it was. When the, oh, it might have been Nicodemus. Yeah, Nicodemus. When he's like, he walked up to him and he said something to him. I forgot what he said. And, and Jesus just knew his motive. Like he knew what he was up to. He knew why he asked him that certain question. So in this case, I, I don't think there's like a motive behind it. I just think that like they just went off with his head because he's out here talking crazy to them. Like, dude, you're not God. You're not the son of God. You're a man. Okay, yeah, you can do these fancy things, but we've seen those before. Now what? And you know the scriptures cannot be altered. So if those people who receive God were called um, were called God, why do you call it blasphemy? And I say I am the Son of God. After all, the Father sent me up, uh, set me apart, and sent me into the world. Don't believe me unless I carry out my Father's work. And if I do His work, believe in the evidence of the miraculous works I have done. Even if you don't believe in me, then you will know and understand that Father is in me and I'm in the Father. Once again, they tried to arrest him, but he got away and left. He went beyond the Jordan River near the place where John was first baptized and stayed there for stayed there a while. And many followed him. John didn't perform miraculous signs. They remarked to another, but everything he said about this man has come through. And many who were there believe in Jesus. What you guys take away from verses 35 all the way to 42? You, know, you look like you're thinking real hard. Yeah, just something... 
34, Jesus replied, it's written in your own scriptures that God said to certain leaders of the people, I say you are gods. And you know that the scriptures cannot be altered. So if those people who receive God's message were called gods, why do you call it blasphemy when I say I am the son of God? After all, the father set me apart and sent me into the world. And so, I, for me, that I would want to dig into that a little bit. Um, just from the surface layers, like Jesus is like, like your own scriptures say that you guys are gods. I'm saying I'm just the son of God. Like I'm not calling myself God. I'm the son of God. And and you try you guys are trying to come after me. Um but I, I want to know why God said that you are gods. Um I have a reference Psalm 82 and 6 that says, I have said you are gods and all of you are children of the most high. Um, I see that there's a difference in the the letter, it's lowercase g in this case. Also Exodus four sixteen. Yeah, I was looking to see if it was somewhere else. Four, yeah, okay, Exodus four four. Um, and thou shalt speak unto him and put words in his mouth, and I will be with thy mouth, and with his mouth, and will teach you what you shall do. And he, sh- he shall be thy spokesman unto the people, and he shall be, even he shall be to thee instead of a mouth, and thou shalt be to him instead of God. Um, That's interesting. So this is God talking to Moses saying that I'm going to make you a God for your people or for my people, or you'll be a God to the people, I guess. Mm-hmm. And then seven, one way he says, um, Moses paid close attention to this. I will make you seem like a God to Pharaoh and your brother Aaron will be your prophet. So seem like a God. Mm-hmm. And then, my Bible says if God called the Israelite leaders gods because they were agents of God's revelation and will, how could it then be blasphemy for Jesus to call himself the son of God? Right. Uh, it's, this is what he was trying to convey to them. How is it blasphemy? How does that make sense? Why are y'all trying to kill me? <laughs> well, by the way, for the viewers that don't know what blasphemy is, can you explain what that is? I think if I don't know what the blasphemy is. Essentially, blasphemy is just claiming to be found. One thing that stood out to me is the fact that they can never catch Jesus. All of them people, they, they never caught him. It wasn't time. It's time to, to 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 be caught, right? Um, because you notice the difference when he was caught and versus when they tried to catch him. It was like he didn't even fight. He just said, "All right, leave it." Like, like, like dude. I think it was somebody. I don't know if they said his name, but when they came to capture him, just chopped one of his one of his soldiers just chopped. One of Jesus' like, uh, followers chopped, uh, cut off one of the ears of the Roman soldiers. And, Peter. Uh, was it Peter? Yeah. Peter cut his ear off, and, and, and God I was like, why would you do that? Picked his ear up, put it back on. He was like, yo, it's my time. It's time for me to go. And um, I was actually thinking about that the other day, and I was just like, even when God put in this dude's air back on, like nobody like thought to believe that he was God. He, there was no stitches, no surgery. He didn't use anything. He picked it up and just, hold on. Let me just put that back there. Let me just put that back there. Yeah, talk about 
he be the potter and we be the clay. Like you just, you just. I'm like, hey, what, where, what position were these people's hearts in when Jesus did what he did? Like, like that didn't make anybody just think twice. Um, and there's one thing. I'm going back to so the definition of blasphemy. It says um, any wrong utterance or action concerning God or sacred thing, the act of cursing or reveling God. So just speaking out against God or standing bad against God or calling yourself God or trying to be a God is just, that's blasphemy. Irreverent behavior toward anything held sacred. Disrespect. But good thing, even after Jesus left and went to where John was first baptized, um, a lot of new followers came with him. Say that again, I'm sorry. No, I said even after when Jesus um departed from them and went to where John was first baptized, uh, his followers came with him. Yeah, he could never escape the crowd, bro. No matter what he did, always was a crowd. He was with Michael Jackson out here. I mean, can't. Yeah, it don't matter where he at, where he where, they gonna recognize him and follow him. Mm-hmm. You got any more thoughts, Gio? Mm. Like, I just. Uh, intentionality of Jesus, how how he just goes from place to place. So I wonder what he's up to. Like, why, why did he go back to the, to the place where John did the baptism? Maybe we'll see that in the next chapter, but I like to watch where he goes and when he goes there and what happens when he gets there. So we'll see what happens. What's the takeaway from verses 41? Um, many followed him. John didn't perform miraculous signs. They remarked to one another, but everything he said about this man has come true. So that's probably why he went back there, right? Um, it's just something about the spirit that was on Jesus, like it just made them realize like, yo, nah, this dude is the real deal. Like, like John wasn't doing anything out of this world by baptizing everybody, but instead he was just doing what he was told to do. He was being obedient. And now we see it right in front of our eyes. Like, wow. Yeah. I, I love that it, where it says in 35, the scriptures cannot be altered. But in 41, uh, you see the fulfillment of the prophecy that we saw several chapters ago, right? that we saw spoken in so many different scriptures that, uh, that John will prepare you the way um, of the Lord. Right? And now we see that fulfilled. And it's amazing uh, when you see uh, what was spoken a long time ago come to fulfillment. Right? Look at when Isaiah spoke about um, the coming of uh, Jesus, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And look at look at the fulfillment here now in John and in the Gospels. So um, for me, that stood out as well, just the fulfillment of, of John's prophecy. Any last thoughts? Are we good? I think the people want to hear from you. Oh. So since since Jesus had that crowd while he was um had into um where John was baptized, 
I'm wondering, how come they didn't like get any like wimp of it or or figure out what happened or just any sense of that? Because it's not like he went by him. Well, he did went by himself, but eventually they came. So maybe we'll find out in the next chapter mm-hmm. if they found him or not. But I'm wondering that. But mainly my my takeaway was that Jesus did every single thing that God told him to do. Never called himself God, but the Pharisee kept trying to mix his word up, mix every single thing they said. And um, Gio, remember last time we were mentioning about the Pharisee, uh, that that tool, um, and they was just spiritually blind. They were spiritually blind. Uh, so much things that you miss that could really have a good impact in your life that could benefit you. Yeah, I think we need to be mindful of that as well. I mean, it's so easy to point out the wrongdoing of the Pharisees, but if we're not careful, God could be talking to us and we can be completely oblivious to it. So, um, like he said, my sheep know my voice. Um, so to just continue to stay within the fold and stay a sheep. Okay. You do the end and pray, then I'm gonna close it out. Close it out fast. Our Father in heaven, as you sit on the throne. Some way, somehow, in your great and mighty power, you still find a way to be gentle and meek, caring and kind, merciful and graceful unto us, your creation. Throughout these many Bible studies, you just remind us that you love us. You live. You never left us, you've never forsaken us, you've never lied, you've never broken a promise. And for that, we give you glory and we give you honor. We thank you for the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that you've been given us throughout these, throughout this journey through your word. But I pray that you continue to shower down illumination through the power of your spirit as we read through this word. I pray that each and every time we read, not just our lives, but the lives of the listeners would also be changed, transformed, and never the same. I pray that all that we learn would be constantly resonating in our minds as we allow it to impermeate our hearts. Father, I pray that throughout the entire day today, that you go before us as the shepherd and we're listening for your direction as the sheep. Keep us, Lord. Continue to protect us from the enemy and his plans. We give you glory. We give you honor. And again, we thank you. May this word never leave us, never depart from us, but may it stay with us and cause us to change And may we be bold enough to share your word to someone else to let them know that we have a good shepherd and would you become one of the sheep should you decide to accept him. I thank you, Lord. Continue to bless us and be a blessing to those who listen to this video. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you guys so much for coming back with us each and every week. If you haven't liked the video, make sure you like. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And this is Motivation for Christian. But as on, come on.